This is G-Wizard. Let's take a quick tour and see what we've got. As you can see, it's divided into a series of applications that you can switch between just by clicking. And at the top we have our login bar where you enter your login information, you can access our online user community, and G-Wizard will tell you whether or not the version that you're running is the current most up-to-date version or not. Lastly, for any application that you're on, you can click the help button and get immediate help on how to use that particular application. Our first application is the calculator. Calculator is your basic sort of scientific engineering function calculator with a few wrinkles. It has the ability to understand fractions for example. So as I type in a decimal number it's showing me the nearest fraction over here. I can also enter fractions. Uh, the calculator has the ability to do unit conversions and so by default it assumes anything you're entering is inches and tells you as you're entering the data what the corresponding millimeter amount is as well and you can switch these back and forth. Lastly the other function that's here for machinists is a variety of different angle uh, entry methods so whether you want degrees, degrees, minutes and seconds, radians, uh, taper per foot or taper per inch, that's all there for you. So that's the calculator. Next we have our feeds and speeds application. A feeds and speeds application is probably the most used part of G-Wizard and is very comprehensive. So to use it, just keep in mind it's just like reading, you're going to go left to right, top to bottom. And so I come in and Normally I will have already selected which machine I want to run. I'll pick a material uh, from the materials list and so let's stay with the aluminum 6061. I'll pick a tool from the tool list, uh, let's say a carbide end mill. Uh, tool diameter can be set here uh, and I can pull the diameter from a, a, uh, a drill index as well if that's helpful. Uh, we're in aluminum and I'm going to go with a three flute. Uh, I can select ball nose or rougher and that gives me uh, additional information. Uh, I can figure out my uh, depth of cut and width of cut. So here we are, we have a uh, half inch diameter and I'm on a full slot so that's a half inch wide and so I may want to ask the question, well gee, how deep can I cut? What, what should my axial engagement be? And so the cut optimizer solves that problem for us. Uh, it knows the you know how much tool stick out there is, which is the distance from your tool holder to the tip of the end mill, uh, and it allows uh, a tool deflection allowance. So here it's set for a roughing allowance of a about a thousandth of an inch. A finish allowance would be more like two tenths. Uh, let's stick with roughing though, and if we optimize our cut, uh, what's what it's telling us is that with this particular tool, full slot. I can go a full one inch deep before I have any tool deflection problems when roughing. So any cut up to an inch. Now I don't want to cut that deep. Let's say I want to go a, a quarter of an inch. All right. So it's telling me I need to run the tool. I need to run my spindle at 5400 RPM thereabouts. And my feed rate should be not quite 65 inches per minute. And by the way, it tells me that for this particular cut, uh, conventional milling is preferred versus climb milling. Uh, if I reduce my cut, okay, if I'm only going to do a, half in, a quarter of an inch instead of a half inch full slot, well then I'm better off to use climb milling, assuming my machine will do that. Now if I click the advanced button, there's a number of other capabilities that come up. For example, uh, I have different limits I can set. These are also in the machine profiles I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I can look at what the surface speed recommended is, the chip loads, I've enabled uh, radial chip thinning calculation, which is very important for your tool wear to figure the proper uh, feed rates. Uh, I can see what my material removal rates are, how much horsepower is going to require, the recommended plunge rate for this particular cut. And I have uh, some simple abilities to calculate how long the operation is going to take. So that is the feeds and speeds calculator. Now geometry calculator gives me a variety of different visual tools to help solve common geometry problems in the shop. I've got trig tools for different types of triangles. I can do bolt circles, dovetails, taper calculations, camphoring, center drill, spot drill, twist drill, countersink, 
uh, circle chords, uh, true position calculations if you're doing uh, geometric tolerancing, uh, point calculations is useful for uh, CNC, uh, even a Turner's cube calculator there with the dimensions if you want to produce a Turner's cube. Next up is our uh, thread uh, information database. I've got three thread families. I've got the unified threads, uh, isometric threads, and I've got pipe threads. Um, so you select the desired family, whether it's an internal and external thread. Uh, pick a size. Uh, let's see, I want to do a, a half inch 20. Uh, and all the data fills in in terms of what the proper measurements are for this thread, even including a table of uh, different tapping drills I might use if I have a cut tap or a form tap uh, to go uh, anywhere from 99% uh, thread. Uh, if I want to do a 67% thread, I need a 0.4429 diameter uh, tapping drill. Now for the quick reference, I've got a, a complete drill index here, which you know tells me the different sizes of drill bits, twist drills that are available. I've got a, a cap screw database, socket head cap screws, uh, 82 degree flat heads, 100 degree uh, head cap screws, and metric uh, flat head cap screws. And again, you've got a little drawing that shows you what all the measurements are for the particular sizes that you've selected. I've got a weights and volume calculator. I select a material and I have a density, a quantity. I have different standard uh, shapes, for example, all the different uh, sizes of I-beam that are available or uh, plate and so on. I enter my dimensions and it'll calculate for me what the uh, weight and the volume is and the unit cost information. Got a, uh, a G and M code quick reference for CNCers out there. I can, I can either select uh, from my list of G codes and I got quite a bit of information on uh, what that code does and so on. Uh, list of M codes. I can group the different codes if I want to see motion related, you know, can cycles, uh, compensation codes, that's all there as well as some of the different other uh, miscellaneous things that you'll see in a G-code program. Then lastly we've got a, uh, a setup area. So you know first thing is do you want to run an imperial inches or millimeter metric? Uh, you can create your different machine profiles here with all the information about the machine's capabilities. The G Wizard uses that in its calculations. Got a tool crib where you can fill out, for example, what you've got in your tool changer or your tool cart. All right, that's been an introduction to G Wizard. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to give it a try or join our beta test, uh, it's easy to do. Just go to www.cnccookbook.com. Click on any of the uh, G Wizard tags that are at the top left of the screen, and it'll take you right to the screen where you need to go to register. Hope to see you there soon. Thanks.